I'm going to speak very briefly on the deterrence to BEMA grafting. How do we address them? Uh, the overall use of BEMAs in the UK and USA is very low. In the USA, for example, according to STS data, only about 5% of patients who have coronary artery surgery have, uh, have bilateral internal mammary arteries, and the corresponding figure in the UK is about 10%. Um, and in some countries like Japan, for example, the use of bilateral internal mammary arteries overall is in the region of about 40%. So what are the factors uh, that are responsible for this low use of BEMAs? And I have put, uh, put all those factors into four groups. One is the technical factors that a surgeon has to face when he's doing the operation, the alternative options that are available to the surgeon, the political atmosphere or the uh, environment in which uh, surgeons work, and, most, and, and importantly now, the paucity of evidence supporting BEMA use. Uh, the technical factors are listed over here. We all know using bilateral internal mammary artery increases the length of the operation by, by about an hour. Uh, in the ART trial, about th uh, 30 minutes more uh, was required for patients who had bilateral art uh, internal mammary arteries. It, there is no doubt that it is technically a more complex operation compared to lima and two veins or a lima and radial. Uh, in some, in some cases when the coronary anatomy is difficult, for example, where you have to graft distally on the obtuse marginal arteries, the use of bilateral internal mammary arteries may be difficult. Uh, the incidence of perioperative complications is higher with the use of two internal mammary arteries. And we saw in the ART trial, the, the rate of sternal dehiscence was almost three times uh, um, in, the, in the patients who had two internal mammary artery grafts. And it is an operation that is more difficult to teach than compared to Lima and two veins. So these are some of the technical factors that, uh, that come in the way of more routine use of bilateral internal mammary arteries. Uh, if, if, BEMA, if the right internal mammary artery was as easy to harvest as a vein, perhaps you would be seeing more, uh, common, uh, more you know, use of the bilateral internal mammary arteries. Uh, secondly, the use of two internal mammary arteries is not a standard procedure. Uh, um, it is used in different manners. This, uh, this slide shows uh, the two internal mammary arteries being used in C2, uh, the right internal mammary artery going to the LED, whereas the left internal mammary artery goes to the obtuse marginal artery. These are, this shows the Y graft being done. Uh, so there are very, various different ways uh, um, bilateral internal mammary arteries can be used, whereas a single internal mammary artery is a pretty standard operation, Lima and two veins. Uh, uh, and there are alternative options available to uh, surgeons. Uh, radial arteries uh, is a, a conduit that is easy to use. Uh, there is a lot of good data, and we heard this morning that uh, the long-term outcomes are much better with saphenous vein, are almost as equal to that with right internal mammary arteries. Uh, so there are these alternative options available which are not technically difficult to do. And therefore, uh, again, this is one of the reasons why BEMA use is not as high. Um, and, and nowadays, uh, saphenous so, uh, vein grafts, the outcomes are better than, uh, than in the 1980s, for example. A lot of data about uh, the, uh, the beneficial effects of BEMA use comes from observational studies that study patients in who, uh, who had coronary artery surgery done in the 80s and 90, Bruce Lytle's paper, for example. Now, in those days, uh, the rate of atherosclerosis development in saphenous vein grafts was very high, as high as 100% at, at 10 or 15 years. That may not be true today. Uh, we just heard about optimal medical therapy, and more patients have optimal medical therapy nowadays than they had in the 1980s and 1990s. So the, the results of saphenous vein grafts today, in 2019, may not be as bad as they were in the 1980s. Um, uh, again, uh, we live in an environment where surgeon-specific outcomes are published, and the only results that are published is, uh, is mortality during the index admission. Uh, so short-term outcomes are measured. Uh, if you use bilateral internal memory artery grafts, it uses more resources, it uses more time, there is a risk of complications, and uh, it's a technically difficult operation, and if there are errors during surgery, then it's, uh, the, those errors are unforgiving, uh, and therefore there's a tendency not to use bilateral internal mammary arteries, because if at all there is any benefit, the benefit is, will be 10 or 15 or 20 uh, years later. Um, 
and therefore there's a reluctance to use bilateral internal memory arteries. And now coming to the paucity of evidence, we have heard uh, over the years we have seen a lot of observational trials that have shown benefit to in with two internal memory arteries. Uh, and the biggest randomized tr control trial that was just reported in the New England Journal, the ART trial did not show any benefit. So what, the, what message does this uh, uh, this give. And just at random, I have picked up this observational study uh, that was published uh, in 2010. Uh, now, this trial from, uh, from America looked at 4,500 patients done by surgeons who were very adept at using bilateral internal memory arteries. And the only, uh, th this trial has been quoted more than 200 times in the literature. So let's look at what this trial showed. Uh, this study, not trial, this study showed that in 4,500 patients who are operated between 1972 and 1984, those who had single internal memory arteries had a 16% 25-year survival, and those who had bilateral internal memory arteries had a 25% 25-year survival, and this was significantly different, suggesting that the use of bilateral memory artery grafts in increases survival. Uh, now let's look at the patients that had these operations. Uh, the patients who were in the bilateral internal memory artery group were more likely to be males than females, were more likely to be less than 50 years of age, whereas patients who were in the single internal memory artery group were more likely to be diabetics, had smoking history, renal dysfunction, poor LV, prior MI. So a lot of uh, morbidities in these patients. So basically, you're not comparing uh, like for like. You're comparing two different groups. So the surgeons had a tendency to select bilateral internal memory arteries in those patients who they felt would live longer. And those patients who they did not feel will, would live longer get, got single internal memory arteries. And if you, if you go back, the number of patients in these two groups was roughly 50% each. So there's a big selection bias in these patients. And this is across the board with almost all observational studies. So, and in this particular study, uh, we saw that the mortality was higher in the uh, single internal memory artery group. And when they stratified for propensity score matching, there was no difference in in-hospital mortality. So in-hospital mortality was same if you looked at all the risk factors. But let's look at the raw numbers. Uh, the raw numbers are like this. The patients who had single internal memory artery grafting had 4.5% mortality, whereas patients who had bilateral internal memory artery had 2.6% mortality. Now, these, these figures are high compared to what we see in, in our practice in 2019, but this is from the 1980s and 1990s. And this is just to bring home the fact that the surgeons selected patients who would have an operative mortality of 4.5%. They selected those patients to have single memory arteries, and they selected the fitter and better patients to have bilateral internal memory arteries. So that is one of the problems with observational studies. There is a bias in selecting patients. And of course, we've had the ART trial, and Umberto spoke about the ART trial, which did not show any difference at 10 years. I know there is a proposal to look at these patients for um, uh, you know, for, for a bit longer, 15 or 20 years, and to see if that makes a difference. But at present, the evidence suggests that uh, there is no strong evidence for using two internal memory arteries from a randomized control trial point of view. And, and we'll have to wait and see what, what longer term <laughs> art, art shows. Okay, so, 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 so that, that's what I would end uh, by, by, uh, by having my say on, on the data supporting the use of bilateral internal memory arteries. And that's perhaps reflected in practice. So we have 10% of patients in the UK getting bilateral internal memory artery grafts. What is no doubt that once a patient has bilateral internal memory artery grafts, if the patient doesn't have immediate uh, complications, then his long-term survival would be better. But pre-hoc, you know, if you divide the patients into two groups, whether you do single memory or two memories, you can expect the same results as long as you do a good operation at that time. Okay.